A group of 15 countries generating nearly a third of global economic output have signed the world's largest ever free trade deal. It's a historic agreement that will have economic implications far beyond the region's borders and signals a seismic geopolitical shift not only for the countries that are part of the deal but also the ones that aren't. The RCEP stands for the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership and when ratified will create a trading bloc rivaling the European Union and the US-Mexico-Canada Agreement. Ten of its members make up the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN, which include Malaysia and Singapore. The remaining five countries are Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea and most notably China. The world's largest free trade deal covers a market of 2.2 billion people, or around a third of the world's population. Its members are responsible for $26.2 trillion of economic output, accounting for roughly 30% of global GDP. While the RCEP is the latest in a long line of trade agreements coming out of Asia, it wasn't supposed to be the biggest. Negotiations for the RCEP trade deal started back in 2013, but it attracted renewed interest in 2017 when President Donald Trump pulled the US out of a rival Asia-Pacific grouping that excluded China. Great thing for the American worker, what we just did. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, would have involved 12 countries, covering 40% of the world economy. While both the RCEP and the TPP were intended to create free and open markets, the TPP had more ambitious goals, covering stricter common standards on labour issues, human rights and environmental protection. The scuttled TPP pact was revived under a new guise involving the 11 remaining countries. The Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, or CPTPP, in 2018. Because China was excluded from the US-led TPP, observers have described the RCEP as a way for China to counter American influence in the region while writing the rules that govern trade in the 21st century. However, some analysts feel that the economic benefits of the RCEP are limited and could take decades to fully materialise. That's because many members of RCEP have already signed bilateral trade deals and benefit from reduced tariffs. Critics include Australia's former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. There'll be some hoopla about the signing uh, and you know, the entry into force of RCEP. I mean, RCEP is a really low ambition trade deal. But we shouldn't kid ourselves. The biggest impact could be the new rules of origin, which officially determine where a product was made. These essentially eliminate tariffs on goods traded between member states, providing greater simplicity than a series of bilateral free trade agreements, especially for companies with global supply chains. Take for example a company in Thailand building tractors for a client in Indonesia. The two countries are part of the ASEAN free trade zone, but because some parts of the tractor are made in Australia, Indonesia might charge a tariff on the finished machine. The RCEP will remove barriers like this, adding an incentive for members to look within the bloc for suppliers. The trade deal could also lay the foundations for stronger economic partnerships in the future, particularly between members that don't already have free trade deals, as is the case with China, Japan and South Korea. The three East Asian nations have been in negotiations over a free trade deal since 2002 without reaching an agreement. Both Japan and South Korea have close economic and security ties with the US, unlike their contentious diplomatic relationship with China. And despite rocky political relations between the communist state and Australia, the two have signed up to the deal. The RCEP is China's first multilateral free trade agreement, which analysts say is a political victory as much as an economic one. The deal comes at a time when the US and China have locked horns over a number of issues, including the South China Sea, supply chains and 5G networks. Without US involvement in the agreement, China could sidestep pressure for major economic reforms or reform of intellectual property rights. Companies which were already shifting supply chains away from China due to the country's trade war with the US may still be able to source products from the country under the new agreement. The RCEP could also strengthen China's global infrastructure strategy, known as the Belt and Road Initiative, while reducing US commercial activity in the region. While the deal was originally conceived by ASEAN, China is set to gain the most financially from RCEP, followed by Japan and South Korea. The direct economic benefits for the 10 Southeast Asian nations may be limited due to their existing free trade accords, with more than 70% of trade inside the bloc already conducted with zero tariffs. Not only is the deal likely to diminish the United States' influence in the region, but it could also cause it to miss out on over $100 billion worth of trade. Another country expected to forego a large amount of income is India. 
The South Asian nation was initially involved in the RCEP negotiations, but dropped out in 2019 over concerns that the deal would result in a flood of cheap imports that would hurt Indian businesses across many industries. There are concerns among members that without India, the smaller Asian countries will be more reliant on China, and in turn, Beijing will have more leverage in the region. How Chinese President Xi Jinping steers the world's second largest economy in the trade bloc will be watched closely. The adverse effects of the South China Sea dispute and the COVID-19 pandemic may lead to a more amicable approach to diplomacy that reassures its neighbours. However, a China-first strategy cannot be ruled out. For the US, its trade policies are affected by the shifting tides of domestic politics. Trump's America First policies have seen the omission of the US from two of the world's largest trade deals, leaving a political and economic vacuum in the Asia-Pacific region. It may take many years for the benefits of the RCEP to be fully realised. But the announcement of the deal signals that although several leading Western countries have adopted isolationist policies, many Asian nations, and China in particular, are increasingly committed to better trade links, which could shape the economic and political landscape for years to come. Hi guys, thanks for watching our video. Please subscribe to the channel, but before you do, we'd love to know your ideas for videos for the new year. So please comment below the video to let us know, and we'll see you next time.